Okay, hello everyone. I'm just Lee from Alibaba Cloud. Um, hope, uh, sorry for waste your time at the beginning. Um, it's very sorry I have not been in Vienna in person and have to give a talk remotely. Um, my topic today is SMC ERM, uh, which is a fast remote memory communication method based on SMC socket. Here is the agenda. Uh, let's let's uh, first talk about the problems we are facing with SMC now. Uh, what is SMC? Before I start, I'd like to ask how many of you have ever heard about SMC? -R? Uh, SMCR is an effort to boost the performance of TCP applications in this center without any code change. It has three main characters. First, it provides the capability APIs, cap compatible APIs with the TCP socket. The second is it uses RDMA for data transmission at the low level. And the third, it implemented in the kernel, which means it can work with static linked applications like uh, Golang. Um, there are three ways we can use SMCR. First, we can change the code explicitly from AF AnNet to AF SMC, or change the protocol to IP Proto SMC in the sys core, in the socket sys core. The second way is uh, to use an um, LD preload. We have a script called SMC run, which can run as a prefix of an application. And it will hook the socket sys core and uh, set the AFINet to AFSMC. And uh, we also have a third way, which is to use eBPF. Um, with eBPF, we can replace an application from TCP to SMC dynamically. This is the same way as what MPTCP did now. This is the most flexible way because it can filter based on address, a port, and process name, etc. Um, SMC has a better performance for long life. TCP connections without any code change. We are trying to replace some applications like Redis and Kafka in the public cloud from TCP to SMC now. But for applications that need lots of bandwidth, SMC does not support zero copy now. So, before we dive into the SMC ERM, let's see how SMC works. On the control path, SMC will first create a TCP connection uh, with an experimental op TCP option uh, to see if both sides support SMC. Um, if the TCP, if both sides support SMC, then we will go to the second step, which is the SMC handshake. And in this step, SMC will prepare all the resources that is needed to do RDMA communication, including allocate SMC buffers and RDMA resources. If any of those steps failed, then SMC will fall back to the TCP connection we established before. So the application should not be affected. Uh, next, let's go to the data path. For one data transfer, for one data transfer from the sender to the receiver, first the sender will try to do a memory copy from the application buffer to the SMC send buffer in the kernel. With the send messages is core, then uh, the data will be transferred by RDMA device, by RDMA device using RDMA write from the sender 
buffer to the peers receiver buffer. Then the sender will then notify the receiver to update its receiver course, cursor. And then the application on the receiver side will call and receive message to copy the data from the receiver's receive buffer to the application buffer. And finally, the receiver will notify the sender to update its send cursor. As you can see, <coughs> for one data transfer, there are two CPU copies from the, the client side and the server side, and one RDMA copy. And those two CPU memory copies limit the throughput of SMC. So this communication is all about moving memory. Why not directly move the data from the sender send buffer to the receiver applications? This is the basic idea of SMC ERM. Which is, <coughs> which is a, a direct memory access on top of SMC socket. We call it extended remote memory. So um, before we extend the API, we we are trying to we saw, we try to see if we can reuse the existing zero copy APIs. For example, we have <coughs> send message, zero copy API, TCP with a message, zero copy flag, or TCP zero copy receive on the set sock option, or get sock option. Um, we did some research on that, but we think it's better to extend the API for two reasons. First, for RDMA, the memory, need to be pinned to the device, to the RDMA device. The second is for TCP, TX and RX0 copy is separated. <laughs> but for SMC, we can, we can directly move the memory from one side to the other. And one more one thing more for RDMA is actually RDMA is it's very easy to support zero copy because for received data, RDMA directly go to the RCQP with no header, which means we already have data header split and the flow director support for RDMA. And secondly, RDMA read-write can access any registered memory, both from the client side, from the local or the remote. So let's go to the design of SMC ERM. Um, when we design SMC ERM, we have two goals in mind. First, we need very high performance. We hope to have a competitive performance over user space RDMA. And the second one is it should be easy to it should be easy to use compared to user space RDMA. So we need a very simple, we need to simplify the APIs for user space applications. This is how it works. First, the user will register memory directly to the RDMA device. Then the ERM will synchronize the register memory to the peer, peer socket. And the third, the metadata is stored in the control message and can be transferred. And the data can be transferred using send message and received using receive message. There are two sets of APIs we extended for SMC. The first is for the control path, and the second 
is for data paths. For control paths, we have a, a set of set sock option, especially to do the memory register and the memory deregister. For the data paths, we have a extended the send message with control message and receive message. And uh, for the control paths, there are three main parts the handshake and uh, the memory register and unregister and the key exchange for the memory region management for the data pass it's pretty simple we can just do do send and receive so for the control pass first thing we need to we need a handshake to tell each other if we support ERM or not. We add it in the SMC handshake process for uh, it's uh, the CLC proposal in the SMC. Since we have already have a handshake in SMC, it's pretty simple. It's pretty easy to support this. And uh, for the ERM control pass API, we have two main APIs for control pass the REC memory region and the DREC memory region. For REC MR, it takes a few parameters, including user memory address, and the most important, the access flag. If the access flag is set to remote read or write, then the memory region will be synchronized to the peer socket by ERM in the kernel. If everything goes well then a uh, memory id is returned the user space can then use this memory id to do direct memory access on the remote side uh, for memory region management we need to do two things first we need to register the memory locally Second, we need to synchronize the memory region to the peer socket if it is marked as remote read or write. For memory registration, we have uh, three routines as user. We have the same routine as the user space RDMA registration. And uh, the memory re region manager our, in our current implementation uh, we implement it in the kernel space. The main benefit of managing it in the kernel space is that we can do safe checks, which is critical for SMC because different SMC sockets can share a same QP. Uh, this picture here shows the reg MR flow. Uh, the memory region management has two management has two MR tables, one for local MR table and one for remote. First, the receiver side a core set sock option with the reg MR and the remote read write side. And uh, then in the kernel, the memory management will register the memory to the NIC. And since we have set the remote read write flag, we need to synchronize the memory region to the peer socket. And uh, what we need is to uh, synchronize the memory ID, address, uh, IDMA R key, and uh, length. Uh, <clears throat> after the sender received the memory ID of the peer, it's updated. It's his. Uh, a remote memory region table so it can then do read write using the memory id so let's go to the data path uh, first we have a very simple api which is uh, send message and as you can see it only it's only send a control message to and it has no data in it. The most important part of this structure is uh, uh, the SMC ERM command copy. We have uh, 
several very important fields, which is uh, the flag, whether we should, we want to notify the remote or, and uh, the local memory ID and the remote memory ID and the offset of the each memory. And uh, if the remote completion flag is set, then after the send message, the peer will be notified and uh, will receive a message that means it can know that some data has come to his memory. And if the remote completion flag is not set, then only a data transfer is triggered without bothering the receiver. And for receive message, it's even simpler. Uh, in our current implementation, we put the control message in the error queue, just like uh, send, uh, send message zero copy did. And uh, after, if the sender had the notification, remote notification set, then the, re then the receiver will receive a notification and uh, an interrupt will be triggered. And then uh, SK data ready will be called and the application should then call receive message with the control message set. And then he can know the data is come and uh, he know where the data is and uh, how much data have been received. Uh, I'll show you some of our preliminary results, test results. So this is a test setup. Uh, we have a SPR CPU with a two, two terabytes memory and a Manlox Bluefield 3. This is the fastest NIC we can get now from the market. Uh, with a PCIe 4 5.0 and uh, the, the topology is pretty simple. We have two virtual machines run on the same host and uh, we have two uh, virtual functions. Um, each one pass through the two one VM and uh, the, so the two virtual machines are running on the same the NUMA node and uh, the CPU are on the same socket, so we don't have NUMA problems or cross socket problems. And uh, we run, since we are doing, we, what we are doing is a zero copy, so we run the throughput test. We compare the throughput test, throughput with TCP SMC and the ERM and the user space RDMA, which is IB Red BW. Uh, the data is transferred from the sender to a receiver only, and the results show that both ERM and user space RDMA can saturate 200 gigabits with just one core. Um, our future work and the standards. Uh, now it's still a POC, and uh, many code is hard coded. The second thing we need to do is to finish the handshake support in the protocol. So we need to extend the SMC protocol to support handshake. And after that, we need to complete the IFC and try to send to the mail list. Uh, some of the future works, including the BD4 support. If we want extreme low latency, we need BD4 support. And current SMC does not support that. And uh, application can, but with ERN, application can do BD4 in its memory, the user space without the kind of support. Um, actually, TCP BD4 has also had some problems in our, uh, in our, I think, you know, the, especially it can do some work for others, which I mean, when you do BD4, you can pour some other sockets packets, which is not belong be belong to yourself. And one more thing is we can, we may try to combine our urine with our ERM socket. Uh, ERM is a, our, ERM is a asynchronous uh, API, so high performance, zero copy. Uh, maybe our urine is, is uh, asynchronous by nature, so I think our urine may help us. Okay, that's all, thank you.
if anyone has any questions.